It's national meets regional. Welcome to Sidewalks Entertainment, the long-running celebrity, music, and art series. Join us now for an exciting new path to celebrity interviews, music, rising talents, and much, much more. Our guest today is a talented actor who can be seen in such projects as Vegas, Terra Nova, and in his critically acclaimed role in Life on Mars. I'd like to welcome Jason O'Mara to Sidewalks. Hey, Hi. Jason, thank you so much for being with us today. Thanks, Cindy. Thanks for having me. So I know that you are originally from Ireland, but how did you get your start as an actor? Well, I... Uh, I you know, graduated from uh, a four-year drama program in Trinity College in Dublin and um, uh, soon after that I moved to London and started doing plays there and uh, bits of television and uh, after about six years I started to audition for pilots here in the States and I was lucky enough to book one. But this is quite a while ago now, this is like 12 years ago and, uh, and off the back of that I, I sort of started to get some work here in the States and uh, you know, I met my wife here. We got married and had a baby, and uh, decided to to make this make America my home. So uh, I, I we're bi coastal. You know, I spent a lot of time in New York and Los Angeles, but uh, you know, thankfully um, things have been busy for me since since I came here. So decided to stay. <laughs> And we're happy for that too, Jason, let me tell you. Let's talk about your TV series, Complications, uh, where you play Dr. John Al Ellison. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what the premise is of this project? Well, Complications is um, from the creator of Burn Notice, and it's um, a high-octane thriller about a, an ordinary Atlanta ER doctor who gets dragged into this gang war after saving the life of a, of a young boy. Now, the young boy's father, as it turns out, is a gang leader who is serving time in prison and orders John to continue protecting the boy until he's fully recovered. And um, this leads to a lot of, yes, you guessed it, complications, <laughs> um, all sorts of complications. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he's 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 a hero, but he's he's pretty reluctant about it. I mean, a lot of these situations are forced upon him. So. Uh, he's doing his best in a very difficult situation and uh, before long he's lying to his wife, he's lying to his co-workers, he's lying to the police. Um, things, things get pretty heavy. Not good. Not good. <laughs> Not good. So when you first read the script for this pilot and, and the series, what kind of interested you about this character in the show? Was there something that kind of grabbed your attention? Yeah, well, first of all, I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of action in our show. It's it's not um, it's not an action show per se, but there are there, there are a lot of action elements, and I was surprised by how deep the, uh, the 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 characters were written, particularly John Allison, my character. Um, he he has a lot going on, and uh, emotionally, but also moment to moment in the series, and watching a, an essentially good person being forced to uh, do bad things. I think is a, a, a compelling thing to watch. Um, I was really impressed by the by the pilot script and by the character. Um, there's nothing really like it on television at the moment. And then once I talked to Matt Nix, um, uh, who who made Burn Notice, uh, he sort of sold me on it because uh, I just thought whatever whatever this guy is doing, I want to be a part of it. Uh, so <laughs> what what what's really interesting is after after we after we made the pilot. Um, the series could have gone in many different ways, and it's been a real, uh, a real joy to, to, to watch the series develop. And, um, you know, about halfway through season one, things really start to kick into gear and uh, every episode starts to get more and more intense. And it just sort of draws the audience in. And um, I, I can't wait to see what people's reaction are is by the time we finished season one. There's so much happens so fast. Right. For sure. Well, you also play Batman for the DC Universe animated original movies. How fun has it been to play such an iconic character like Batman? Well, I sort I sort of felt the pressure early on. You know, you want to get an iconic character like that right, and so many fans have uh, very strong ideas about what Batman should sound like. Um, also, it's been done. Batman's been played so well by so many great actors over the years that you know. 
uh, you don't want to be the guy that messes up. But uh, I, I think I think <laughs> <laughs> now since I've done a few of them, I've sort of to started to drop into it and uh, it's 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 become a lot of fun. I also have an 11 year old son, so he certainly appreciates it um, when when a new movie comes out and we go and watch it together at one of the, you know, sci sci fi conventions or whatever. And um, it's it's you know, it's just one of those lovely jobs that that you get every now and again where um, you can, you know, I can bond with my son over it. So it's um, for sure. It's really yeah, it's really cool and a, and a, and a real privilege to to play the bat. So outside of the Batman character, who is your favorite superhero or villain? Do you have one? Um, my favorite villain has always been the Joker because I just um, I love that idea of um, uh, someone being psychopathic, but also um, fun to watch. And uh, I, I, I've always tried to, uh, whenever I've played bad guys, I've always tried to make them uh, compelling and, and fun to watch. And I think that's what uh, that's what makes these uh, villains um, uh, so loved by legions of fans, despite the fact that they're, um, you know, psychopathic killers. Um, sure. I think in terms of uh, in terms of superheroes, it's it's really that's a tough question. It's really hard to top Batman, isn't it? I mean, who who's better than Batman? I you know I gotta agree with you on that. <laughs> <laughs> Well, fans loved you in Terra Nova and are hoping for a season two or maybe a continuation movie. Um, does their love for the project still sort of catch you by surprise? Yeah, I mean, you know, that's that's one that I've I've always said um, was, you know, it was like the one that got away. And uh, I've always thought it was uh, and I've said this publicly that that it was canceled too soon. And obviously many of the fans agree with me. Um, I, I felt like we were just kind of getting going with the story and and uh, and it was stopped. Um, it's one of those shows that seems to go on to have this other life after it aired. You know, people are finding it um, on, on other platforms on the Internet and other places. And uh, Listen, all I can say is I, I, I hope it happens, uh, but it certainly doesn't look very good. And I think I think it's only fair to fans uh, when I say that, you know, it's it's I think we're just going to have to settle with what we made. But at the same time, uh, you know, Stephen Lang and I always talk about the possibility of, of, of trying to wrap it up somehow. So you never know. I mean, if fans get together and campaign and make a compelling argument for some network or studio or Netflix or somewhere like that, Never say never. Well, I'm sure all of your fans watching right now are going to find a way to do it. So <laughs> uh, let's see if we can't get that show back on. Jason, thank you so much for being with us today on Sidewalks. It was just a pleasure to have you. Thank you, Cindy. It's been a pleasure to be here. For more full-length celebrity interviews, visit SidewalksTV.com.